What's up, everybody? So I get a lot of emails and comments and notifications on YouTube and Twitter about, hey, you should really make a video on the overview of Burp Suite. What is it capable of? What are some things that you can do? And I thought, that's a great idea. Why haven't we done that before? We've made videos on using it, but we've never made videos on actually what it does. So in this video, we're just going to take a high level approach. It's not going to be a hands on tutorial, but more of a visual tutorial. And we're just going to watch and learn how to use some of the features of Burp Suite. So before we get started, as always, if you like the channel, please do hit that like button, that subscribe button and hit the bell if you want more notifications for when I post a new video. And I love each and every one of you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be using Burp Suite Professional in this video. However, I will show you some Burp Suite Community Edition, which is the free edition, and I'll talk a little bit about the differences as well. This video, again, is not going to be a follow along video. If you do not have Burp Suite installed, your certificate installed, and know how to set up a proxy, that's okay. This isn't a walkthrough video, but a just watch and understand what Burp Suite has to offer. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to navigate out to a website. We're going to go to hackerone.com and we're just going to hit enter. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go back and we're going to check our targets. Now in this target tab is anything and everything that has gone through your proxy. And I should backtrack a little bit and say we're running through a proxy. So if we come to the proxy tab here, you could see that my intercept is off. This intercept being off means that I'm just not intercepting any traffic but I'm still listening for traffic. Under this options tab here, you could see that I run on an interface of 127.001.8080. That means that I'm listening on my local host through a port of 8080. I've got this tool here running called Foxy Proxy, which is also listening on 8080. So I've got that selected. All my traffic currently is running through my proxy, which is Burp Suite. So when I do gain traffic or generate traffic, it all comes through on this targets tab. And you can see that I did generate hacker one down here, but hacker one's got a lot of stuff going on in the background that we don't even know about. It's got Google analytics. It's got something called drift running in the background. You could see that there's a hacker one.net and errors.hacker one.net and a lot of different things just running here. So this can get messy really quick. What if we just want to target hacker one, for example, well, we could do something like right click here and say add to scope and say yes. And then we could just click up here on the top and kind of narrow it down and say, let's just show everything that's in scope. Why is this important? I'll show you here in a second. So let's go over to hacker one. And if you've never used hacker one before, that's okay. I'm not even signed in. So hacker one is a bug bounty platform. There are several out there. Uh, there is bug crowd, there is Synac, and I believe integrity is a new one as well. So we can go up to for hackers here and we can go to program directory. And what hacker one does is there are programs that are out there that will let you hack them for the sake of trying to find a vulnerability. So what we're going to do is we're going to just try to find any vulnerabilities here. We're only going to do enumeration. We're not going to really do attacking because I really can't show that on video. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to choose this one, the Stripo Inc. And this is a platform that is actually not for bounties. You can see that it's actually ineligible for bounties. So this is just kind of a kudos platform, but people do kudos platforms to gain kudos and maybe gain in access into private bounties and maybe just for the kindness of their heart. So today we're going to be just kind and poke around this Stripo here. So let's go ahead and go out to stripo.email, which is in scope. And again, here, why is this important? Well, we've got in scope items. OK, so in scope means that we're in scope. So say, for example, my email was down here and it said out of scope. Well, if it's out of scope, we can come into our tabs and we can say, hey, exclude a certain website from the scope. Or we could say, hey, keep a certain website in scope like I just did with Stripo. But I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. And so what we can do is we can make sure that we stay in scope as an attacker and that we do not go out of scope and attack a web page we're not supposed to because that's a big no-no. So from here, let's go ahead and navigate out to the stripo.email. 
and we'll see that the page loads and I'm going to copy this and we come back here and we see that no traffic's being generated here. That's because of our scope settings. Let's go ahead and paste this URL. And once we refresh this page, we should start to see some traffic generate for Stripo. And you can see all the things that are starting to pull down. This is pretty nice. So anything that's grayed out here means that it hasn't really accessed the file. It just knows that it exists. If we actually make a request out there, it will respond with it appropriately. So we can make these requests. We're not going to do that. So another feature is say that we want to do a spider of this website. Say we want to see what's out there on the website. We've got all these grays. We want to see if it can find anything else for us, including something like a robots.txt. A nice feature is we can just right click and say scan. And we could do a crawl feature here. So we can crawl and the crawl will go through the website, spider it and try to find any different pages that it might be able to. You can see immediately it just found a robots.txt and now this is starting to, to kind of click through. We can click on the response. We can see the request here and we can also see the response, which is nice. You can see the different cookies that are set, what's allowed in the robots.txt, what's disallowed etc. And this is just going to go through and try to find any useful files and just crawl the website. Now on the free edition, that is also a thing. However, it is actually called, it's called spidery. So it does the same thing. You're just not going to see it from a scan perspective. You're going to see it from a spider perspective when you right click on it. So you have the same feature across both, but this is really nice. You can start to see things lighting up black and we can start to see other pages come through. So from here, let's talk about what other things that we can do. Let's talk about, let's go to a login page. Let's go to the sign in page. This will show us a few things. So on the sign in page, let's go to our proxy. And what's nice about the proxy is we can turn on intercept. And it says right now, no listeners are listening. Ah, it's because I'm on the free edition. Let's go to the proxy here and let's go to our intercept and turn it on. Let me minimize this. And we're going to refresh this page. And we can see if I quit clicking on the wrong ones that the proxy was intercepted here. We have an intercept on. What does that mean? That means you can make all kinds of changes. We can change this post request to a get request and we could forward that on and see what it does. Uh, another thing is that we can right click on this and send this to repeater and I'll show you that. And we can just drop this packet. Let's say it's not important. And then there's this intercom. We're intercepting a little bit of everything here. I'm just going to keep dropping packets. And the thing that we can do here is let's go back to this page. If we can. And let's try sign up one more time or sign in one more time. And what we're going to do is, you know, let's do our options on the proxy. And you saw we were intercepting a lot of weird stuff. We can come into options and say, hey, intercept client requests and intercept server requests as long as the client's in scope. So that'll make it easier, not generate as much traffic. Hit enter now and you'll see that we are still good to go. So we're going to refresh, see if it gets caught up. It doesn't because this is a my.stripo email. So now we're OK. So let's go ahead and actually add this into our scope as well, because that was part of our original scope. And we're going to play around with this just a little bit. So we're going to go into here and we're going to go and say, we're going to say target scope and add to scope. We'll paste it. And then we'll go to the proxy. We'll turn that off, turn it back on. Let's refresh this web page. And you'll see now that we've intercepted this request, which is appropriate. So I'm going to forward this one to repeater and I've got a couple in here, but let's say we want to make this request. We can send this request and you could see we made a get request to this slash cabinet and you could see that it came back as 200. Okay. We've got our header information here and we could scroll through the page, see if there's anything on here. We can also uh, mess with this, right? We could say, what if we say post? And let's send that now. And you can see it says, hey, 405 not allowed. But the nice thing is we can modify a request and we can see the response right here. And we can just keep changing the re request with this repeater format and keep seeing the different responses. Very, very useful.
I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this intercept, let this flow through. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and try to sign in. I don't have an email address, so I'm just going to say uh, heath at heath.com. And I'm just gonna put a password, a password in. And I'm gonna go back to the intercept. I'm gonna intercept this request. So we're gonna to try to sign in. You see it's stalling. And now you can see that email password here. I'm gonna do a feature here now that says send to intruder. Now intruder allows us to do what are called password spraying attacks or credential stuffing attacks. It allows us to make a lot of requests in a short period of time. Now you can see all the different highlights here. It tries to highlight and guess where you might want your parameters. I'm gonna go ahead and hit clear. Let's say for example that I wanted to attack just one parameter and say it's the password. Say I knew the email address or that the user login was admin or I knew heath at heath.com was a user and I want to try to break in this password. I could highlight the password and select add and then the sniper attack would be the attack of choice. We have a few different attacks here depending on how many parameters you want to select. Then we come into here and we have payloads and what we can do is paste a ton of different payloads or we could say add from a list and we can just say passwords. Now this is a feature. This add from list is a feature of the professional suite. So we can come through here and you can see all the different passwords and I've got 3,400 different payloads here that I can attempt to use. Now I'm gonna start the attack and then I'm going to immediately stop it. You can see that it's coming through and it is, it's attempting to do the attack with all these different ones and we're 404ing. So user not found. <laughs> that's a little bit of a user enumeration from this login here. Okay, and it's gonna 404 on every request because the user is not found. But the things that we can look for here is error messages. And we can go in and we can set our own error message. And we can look for length because maybe the different lengths signifies to us that there has been a successful attempt. So you're seeing 449. What if you see like 1049 or something like that? or you see a status change from 404 to 200 or 301 to 200, then you know that there's something up, something's different, and we may have had a successful login. So Intruder is a very, very friendly tool. I use this all the time on network penetration tests and web application penetration tests just because of its flexibility. So from here, let's go ahead and cancel this attack. And there's a few more up here that are nice. We have the decoder feature and encoder Say for example, you see something that's maybe encoded in like URL encoding or base64 encoding, or you want to encode it in those. You can right click on something and you can say send to decoder. And we can go into here and we could say, hey, decode as, or for this case, since we are decoded, we could say encode as. So let's encode this as base64. Does it right away? Or maybe URL encoding and there's URL encoding. So it does quick encoding and decoding for us. There's also a compare feature where you can compare uh, two different requests to see what the differences are between them. Very nice feature. Now the extender feature is fantastic. There is this app store here and you can see, let me sort by popularity. There are some items in here that are free and there are some items that are not free. And you can see like this active scan plus plus that I have installed is not free, retire.js, et cetera. Well, what do, what do these all do? Well, something like this active scan plus plus is an addition to the active scanner, which we haven't covered yet, or additional scanner checks, same thing, or Java deserialization. It checks for Java deserialization. So they just go through and they do a lot of these checks for us, which is awesome, right? And we, we have a lot of these that we like to, you know, have installed. And some of these come with the Pro Edition. And it's just worth having this for the Pro Edition as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this intercept off. And let's, let's talk about one more important feature that we haven't yet. So let's say that we have this website. We've crawled it. Let's see how the crawl is doing. Still crawling. Going to take forever. Uh, let's go ahead and pause it. So let's say we've crawled the website, you know, we've done our investigation and then we want to check it for vulnerabilities. Well, we can say right click and scan and then we could go to audit selected items in here. And the selected items are all the items that we've uncovered so far. 
A lot of times we'll consolidate these items. So it has this feature here, meaning that we'll remove anything that's a duplicate and maybe remove anything without parameters because there's just a lot and say next and say, okay. And you can see it takes it down quite a bit. Um, but what we can do here is we can hit okay and you go to the dashboard and it's going to start making these requests. Now these requests are going out and we can go into the settings here and scan configuration. And you could see all the different things it's going to check for command injection, SQL injection, file path traversal. It's got a whole list of stuff, right? So it's checking actively. This is actively scanning the website for different vulnerabilities in the website. And it's going to say, hey, I found certain things here. And when you come into the target and you click on the target, you can see red, orange, et cetera, yellow right here depending on what it's found. And then over here on the right side, it tells you what vulnerabilities it has found. Now, this doesn't catch everything. I would say this catches maybe 15 to 20% of things, but it's still nice to have in your back pocket and an easy way to you know, assess a website pretty quickly while you're working on other things. Maybe something pops up that you know a robot finds that you might not have found without a lot of enumeration. This is a great feature. Overall, Burp Suite Professional has some differences compared to the free version. So we've got this active scanning. If we go into this one, you could see issue activity is pro version only. Active scanning and the extender apps are absolutely worth it. Another thing to note too is that there is Intruder on the paid version of it, Intruder goes at a much faster rate. Now we can bypass that with what is called Turbo Intruder and that is on a free edition. So we can install that and use it similarly to Intruder and not have to pay for that. But in my opinion, now a burp license is $400 a year and I would not go without a burp suit license uh, in, in any situation. It is one of the few things that I actually pay for being a business owner and pen testing yeah, I think it's an absolute necessity. Now, if you're saying, hey, do I need it right now? I don't have the money. You know what? Maybe maybe do some bug bounties, maybe earn it, work your way to it, and then purchase it. But I, I think it makes a big difference overall. But that is the overview that I wanted to show you. This is so robust. This is a 10,000 foot overview right now. This is by far not even close to everything that Burp Suite can do but this is a good little indication of what it's capable of and what some of the common tabs that are in use. You learn as you go a lot more of the features that it has and it is incredibly robust, as I said. So that's really it. Just wanted to make a short video and cover some of these features. If you have any questions on the features, if there's something I left out that you wanted to see, do comment down below and let me know your feedback. And until next time, I really thank you for watching the video.